Hi everybody, welcome to Nutrition Q&A 8. For those of you that don't know, these are videos where I answer a lot of nutrition questions in a row that are all too small for their own videos, so I just put a bunch of them into one. Check the timestamps in the description to look for the questions that you actually care about. And without further ado, let's get into it. True or false, sugar in fruit is more nutritious than sugar in a cookie. False. Okay, what is the recommended added sugar intake? So the recommended amount of added sugar you should have 10% or less of your total calories should come from added sugar. So less than 10% of your total calories should come from added sugars every day. Next, I'm going to talk about anabolic resistance. So it basically, it is a blunted muscle synthesis response to resistance training as you age. In order to resistance train and have that muscle synthesis response successfully as an adult, you may need more protein. Basically, that's all it is compared to when you were younger. Your protein doses may need to double to see similar results in adults because as you get older, your muscle synthesis response gets a little less efficient. So to combat that, you may need to increase your protein as much as double each day, but that will be the uh, positive way to fix this and to see the similar results that you did when you were younger. Is coconut oil healthy? So actually, the upsides of coconut oil cancel out with the downsides of coconut oil for a neutral health impact. So it is not healthy, it's not unhealthy, it's just average net neutral. What is the recommendation for saturated fat? So saturated fat is the bad fat compared to unsaturated fat, and you should have 10% or less of your total calories from saturated fat every day. Okay, this next question is about pickle juice which really has a lot of health benefits that I was never aware of. I don't drink pickle juice, but if you want to or you like to, here are the positive reasons why you should. It aids in hydration. It contains a high concentration of sodium, which will increase your thirst drive and increase your fluid retention. Having a high amount of electrolytes, which pickle juice also does, both will make you more thirsty and help you retain water better. How does frequent alcohol use influence athletes? So this may not be what you were expecting, but frequent alcohol use increases reaction time and increases recovery time. Frequent use is open to interpretation. That does not mean binge drinking every night. It's more of a moderate amount, a drink or two every few days, but moderate Drinking actually does help in athletes anyway by increasing reaction time and recovery time. So everything in moderation, I guess. What is one standard drink? One standard drink is a beverage that contains 0.6 ounces of ethanol. So ethanol is the standard unit for alcohol and having 0.6 ounces is what constitutes one drink. Okay, moving on to the omega fatty acids. So this is one of my cards from my nutrition coach studying, and it is more full than almost any card that I was using because there's just so much to cover. So there are actually two more cards that are just omega fatty acids, and I'm gonna read through all of them because there is a lot to talk about. So the two main types of omega acids are omega threes and omega sixes. They are both essential polyunsaturated fatty acids, and omega-3s are found in fish, seafood, flaxseed oil, and walnuts primarily. Omega-6s are found in corn, soybean, and safflower. So omega-3s have many positive health impacts, including lowering depression, lowering your risk of developing Alzheimer's, and lowering your risk of developing coronary disease. Also, for pregnant women specifically, having omega-3s is great for the eye and brain development of a growing fetus. Omega-6s have a lot of the same health benefits. However, that is from the positive food sources I just mentioned, 
corn, soybeans, and safflower. Omega-6s are also unfortunately found in processed foods. So the public consumes the majority of omega-6s from chips, crackers, and pastries, which unfortunately will not yield the same positive effects. Now moving on to a specific omega-3 fatty acid, EPA stands for eicosapentaenoic acid. I think I did that right. And it is an omega-3 fatty acid found in fish, and it has a lot of positive health benefits. So it serves as the structural component for brain and eye tissue, and it serves as a precursor to various compounds with anti-inflammatory activities. So it also helps fight against inflammation. So basically, this EPA, omega acid, is good for brain and eye development, and it's good for anti-inflammatory purposes in your body. So those are some pretty big wins, specifically to EPA. If you can get that in your diet, I would really encourage it. And another omega fatty acid, DHA, stands for docosahexanoic acid. It is an omega-3 fatty acid found in fish, and it is highly abundant in the development for brain, eye, and sperm cells. So it is just like we talked about with EPA, great for eye and brain development. It also has the added benefit of helping your sperm cells. If you can get your DHA, I would also greatly encourage that. Okay, so that's a lot, but there's a lot more to talk about with Omegas. So I will add a link or resources right here. More information about Omega-3s, Omega-6s, those are just a few of the omega fatty acids that there are. Consuming omega-3s in any amount will be great for your health. Benefits of it are in eye and brain development, but specifically if you can consume DHA and EPA, it will be advantageous to your health in the long run. Okay, moving on to the MET scale. The metabolic equivalent is a really cool way to measure the intensity of different forms of exercise and movement against each other. So one MET describes your RMR and energy expenditure. Your RMR is your resting metabolic rate and the actual definition, word for word, is one MET equals 3.5 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute. That is a constant rate. That's how much energy you expend in the form of oxygen per pound or per kilogram. So that is a constant rate of how much air you are expending to do these various forms of exercise. You don't need to know that number. That number does not really mean anything to you, but it is just relevant for this scale to you know, compare different intensities of exercise. So light met activities are sleeping, which is a 0.9, watching TV, which is a 1.0, walking at 2.5 miles per hour is a 2.9, and similarly, walking at 3.0 miles per hour equals a 3.3 on the MET scale. Now we are into the moderate category, the medium category. Calisthenics is 3.5, but that depends on how intense your calisthenics exercises are. If you're doing all out push-ups or pull-ups or something, it will probably be higher. And that's what accounts for the difference because if you're doing yoga or restorative you know, recovery, then it could be closer to a three on the med scale. But if you're working out hard and exercising, it's closer to a five. The final addition to the moderate column is cycling, specifically stationary cycling is between a four and a five. If you were cycling outside with hills, that could be closer to a six or a seven. So it's all about the intensity and for stationary cycling, for easy calisthenics, those are moderate intensity. And finally, the vigorous column in the MET scale goes to jogging, which is 7.0, running, which is 8.0, and jump rope, which is 10.0. Again, these are open to interpretation because my running is not necessarily the same as your running, and it's all about you know how much effort you're exerting, the speed you're going. The hardest form of exercise on the MET chart is jump rope at a 10.0. 
So jump rope is brutal. It's pretty intense no matter how you're doing it. But in general, this is accurate for how it compares to everything else on the scale. So keep in mind that jogging, running seven to eight, about three times as hard, twice as hard as walking at 2.5 miles per hour. So one more time to summarize the whole met column really quickly, sleeping 0.9, watching TV 1.0, walking at 2.5 miles per hour is a 2.9, walking at three miles per hour is a 3.3, calisthenics is anywhere from three to five, cycling, stationary, anywhere from four to five, jogging is a seven, running is an eight, and jump rope is a 10. So I hope that clarifies the different intensities of exercises. I think it's pretty accurate. The more effort you put in, the less time you need to be in the gym, which is a big thing, and the better results you'll get. So I really believe that training at a higher intensity for less time is the best way to go about your training for better results and a higher quality or a higher enjoyment of life because you're not spending all of your time in the gym. All right, everybody, that was Nutrition Q&A number eight. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you did and subscribe for more. I post a lot of training and nutrition videos. I upload every week, so stick around for those. And that's it. I will see you next week. So with that, take care. Peace. <laughs> I make such dumb faces. So it really is a great amount of I'm rambling. Um, additionally, the health of your sperm. <laughs> I really can, dude. Okay. Okay, pickle juice. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm never gonna get through this.